Welcome back to Shannon's Club TV, the show for all motoring enthusiasts to indulge the passion we share for classic cars and motorcycles. In each episode, we uncover new insights about what made our feature car successful and take a road trip in an owner's example. We'll also get the latest market updates from the Shannon's auctions team. So let's get things rolling with the French icon that broke every family car convention, the Citroen DS. When the Citroen DS first broke cover in Paris late in 1955, it not only generated a stampede of orders, it provided a glimpse into the future in almost every area. By 1961, growing Australian sophistication supported local assembly of a unique version. Nominating a single standout area in the new Citroen DS is impossible, as there were so many. The trickle down from a booming aviation industry could be seen in its teardrop aero body, a new benchmark for a sedan. There were exciting new weight saving applications of aluminium, plastics and fibreglass. The latest curved glass technology delivered wraparound vision front and rear, a wheelbase as long as the biggest US cars placed all the heavy items between the axles. With front wheel drive, it was an exceptionally safe and stable platform. And that was just the start of it. Mark applying the race on Sunday, sell on Monday mantra to a big family car powered by a small 1.9 litre four cylinder engine would normally be wishful thinking. It would when you're talking <laughs> about competition cars, but in Australia we had the Armstrong 500, the annual 500 mile race for stock standard production cars. And in that sense, this car really excelled. You know, look at what it had, big front disc brakes, wide track handling at the front, Hydro pneumatic suspension, a really beautiful aerodynamic bodywork, and it was tough as hell. I mean, they could just beat it with a stick and you couldn't kill it. And in that sense, talking about, you know, race on Sunday, sell on Monday, the car had a lot of strengths. And the track was treacherous too, much like our country roads. It sure was, yeah. This radical Citroen was not dependent on any one item to shine. Brilliant self-stabilising steering geometry, massive inboard front disc brakes, pioneering Mitchell and X steel belted radials, and more. Its four-cylinder engine featured an aluminium cross-flow Hemi head and twin-throat carburetor. Thanks to DS weight saving and aerodynamics, it performed as well as a Family 6 on less fuel. Across the world, high-pressure hydraulics replaced pulleys, levers and gears in almost every industrial application. Citroen exploited these advances in the DS. The hydraulics for the revolutionary hydro-pneumatic suspension was used to assist the steering, brakes, clutch and gear shift. The big Citroen was also tough and long lived. Because it translated so well to Aussie conditions, a special Aussie ID19 retained all the best features of the DS without its complexity. The Parisienne, as it was soon known, generated a steady and loyal following in Australia that has never waned. Mark, these advances not only supported a decent showing at Bathurst, mm. It was still a force in rallying over a decade later. It sure was, and there was no greater demonstration of that than the big marathons of the late 1960s and early 70s. The annual Armstrong 500 endurance race, which started at Phillip Island in 1960 before moving to Bathurst three years later, attracted a staggering variety of makes and models in its early years. And it would be hard to think of a vehicle more unusual or intriguing than Citroen's ID19. As Joe explained, it had styling and technology that was way ahead of its time. However, on paper, the large front wheel drive French sedan didn't jump off the page as a race or rally contender, given that it only had a small four cylinder engine to power a generous 123 inch wheelbase and a curb weight that exceeded 1.2 tonnes. But conventional logic did not apply to such an unconventional vehicle. In its first Armstrong 500 at Phillip Island in 1962, the ID19's rugged durability and the composure of its hydro pneumatic suspension on a crumbling track surface produced a best result of third in class. At Bathurst two years later, it repeated that achievement with another faultless run. On both occasions, the Citroen was beaten only by more powerful V8 rivals. Joe, the ID19's Armstrong 500 results, particularly at Phillip Island that year on that terrible track surface, it must have impressed a lot of buyers, and I imagine particularly those living in rural areas. Well, these days we think of Citroen as little runabouts, mm. but in those days 
The big Citroen was a legitimate family car. Mm. In fact, it was probably better than the Holden mm. and not that much more expensive by the time it was built here. And you got this amazing car that just flattened out our worst roads, used hardly any petrol with a four-cylinder engine and its sleek aerodynamics. Looking at it at Phillip Island, wow, yeah. if you'll buy one of those. That was the, the connect that went on at the time. Yeah, race on Sunday, sell on Monday really stood. The Citroen's advanced engineering also made it a formidable rally car on a global scale. The rougher the terrain, the better it performed, often beating faster and more powerful opponents that could not match its unique ability to travel quickly on rough roads across vast distances with enviable comfort and durability. This was clearly demonstrated in the 1968 London to Sydney Marathon, when works drivers Lucien Bianchi and Jean-Claude Augier were heading for certain victory in their DS21 until they crashed out after colliding with a spectator's car less than 200 kilometres from the finish line. However, the legendary Citroen did go out on a high note when a DS23 driven by Red X trial winner Ken Tubman and his all Aussie crew dominated the 1974 World Cup Rally, an event remembered as the toughest and, thanks to a disastrous section through the Sahara Desert, most life-threatening of all the marathons. You can read many other great road and race stories on the Shannons Club website. My name is De Silva. This is my Citroen ID19, 1960 model. I do believe I have this car for about 10 years now from a place in Heidelberg. I spent a lot of time and money on this car, so I'll bring it back to this uh, condition it is today. The color was the same, but it was bad and I have to polish it. Under the bonnet was very dirty, and, but I believe it was a good thing to do. This car belonged to Bob King, which is a uh, a uh, really city fanatic, yes. Oh yeah, indeed. I believe he's on his 70s now. He's, uh, he have lovely Citroens. The reason I love these Citroens is because when I was a young kid back in Portugal, my godfather had one, exactly the same, only in blue colour. I love them because the way they ride, the way they, you know, the suspension goes up and down, that's, that's amazing. The headlights, the, the way the front of the car is unique. It is indeed, it is an unusual looking car, but the, the shape of the car, that's what I, I'm passionate about it. Yes, I'm a Citroen collector, uh, but I'm not making money of my cars. I still got the nine in my shed. This car drives very well, very, very, really well. I just love them. Well, Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobon, joins us. Welcome to the show again, Chris. Hi, Mark. Hi, Chris. The Citroen ID mm. DS. Uh, what a car. And those early ones are quite rare, and, but we're noticing prices are going up very steadily. Is that a reflection of the, the car being more in demand, or is there a whole new interest in that car? I think we're seeing a, a new interest in it. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of retro chic that um, mm. we're seeing coming back. Um, we're seeing a lot more of the car, whether it's the ID or the D or the S, being used in in commercials on TV. So it, it's it's actually brought about this, you know, mm. very cool sort of uh, vibe to have one. Um, yeah, and look, and again, it's an avant-garde shape, and uh, and I think it was predominantly appreciated by lovers of French cars previously, now we're seeing a whole new uh, crowd getting interested in the car. And Chris, I guess one of the most important things with these cars is the condition of the car. I mean, you talk about the avant-garde styling, but this was avant-garde engineering as well. There was a lot can go wrong with that car, I think. Very different to what was around in that period, mm. in that era. Um, absolutely. So, uh, look, I think we're seeing, you know, there have always been the French experts working mm. on those cars. Um, yeah, and, and look, you know, with, with the suspension, uh, the body, you know, really, I think probably the key thing is to find a car with a good body on it. Because there um, are rust issues, aren't they? Uh, there were rust issues, mm. uh, you know, but we have seen some very good cars. Mm. We've seen some very good examples come through our auctions in recent times. Yep. Uh, and the prices have steadily been rising on these cars. So condition's really important. Very important on those yeah. cars, yeah. Yep. Well, I guess the one good thing, Mark, is mm. that Citroen has come back on the market very strongly in Australia. Yeah. And uh, those specialists that kept the car going in the 70s when, yeah. when it disappeared, mm. 
they've got this expertise, they've now got new cars to work on, so they're now, there's now quite a viable network of Citroen specialists, yeah. which is great news if you buy one of these old Citroens. There's no shortage of people to keep them on the road. And I think right, that might yeah. be driving a bit more confidence in the car as well. Yeah, it could be. I think you know it, it does give them. Uh, you know, it gives the specialists a reason, obviously, to keep the business going and running. And uh, yeah, a combination of good, the old cars and the new coming through. Well, thanks yeah. for joining us, Chris. And keep in mind, you can keep up to date with all the latest Shannon's auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. For a lasting memory of any of the competition cars you've seen on the show, visit autopix.com.au. Joe, it's amazing looking back at the Citroen DS. I used to see these things all over the place when I was a kid. They must have appealed to you know, a very broad spectrum of buyers. It's really interesting because I remember in the 60s when they started to hit Australian mm. roads in numbers and most Aussies really didn't know how to handle them. They were very <laughs> confronting. <laughs> they, were, they were often called frogs with yeah. the obvious connection to the French mm. origins. But there is a very strong intellectual group, often mm. engineers, who bought the car because it provided a glimpse into the future. But on the other hand, you had these very down-to-earth, practical blokes on the land who bought them for their practical application because mm. back then, the French had to build their cars for some very mm. rugged colonies and it translated to Australia beautifully. And it was amazing, like after two decades of production, mid-1970s, it still looked so distinctive. There was nothing like it. Yep, uh, just amazing car. <laughs> We will never forget the Citroen DS. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this very French-flavoured look at the iconic Citroen DS and ID. We look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.